So at this point, all that's left is for us to convert this into an HDA. Again, same thing to make things more practical, more easy to manage and expose only the options that are actually necessary. And so you can repeat the same process easily to other, other sets of data. Now for that, I'm gonna do the same thing as before. So we'll select everything except, no, we'll select all of this. Uh, there is also, yeah, the curve is another input. So I'm gonna keep the curve out of the digital asset and we'll just use these. So everything except the curve. Okay, the curve should be coming from outside as an option for masking the borders. So having this selected, I'm gonna switch here to manual so it doesn't try to update automatically, otherwise we'll, we'll have to wait every time we make a change. I'll pack it and it automatically recognizes the three inputs as you can see here. Let's rename this, let's say lighter to height field and we'll create a digital asset. I'll save it on the same spot on my hip folder and HDA and we'll save it here, except just changing the name and adding the versioning 1.0. Here, I don't want the versioning to be, and here maybe change the label to height fields, lighter to height fields. Actually, let's use the caps here. Accept. So now we have our HDA. Same thing as before. So in this case, the minimum inputs will be one, the maximum inputs will be three. Okay, we will, we will be able to receive um, a set of points for the ground, a set of points for the vegetation, and we will also have the option of inputting a curve for masking out the borders. The maximum outputs, um, for now let's leave it at one. And what else? I think that that's it. For now, that, that, that's, that's pretty much it. Other things we'll want to include. So I'm thinking about three main aspects that we want to be able to turn on and turn off um, using, again, the same strategy, toggle. We can duplicate these, pressing D. And these three elements are gonna be the borders, flatten borders, the scatter and applying the erosion. We'll keep that as an option. Okay, so these three options, we'll connect them as before to switches inside the digital asset. I'll hit apply. Let's start with the flattened borders. I'll copy this parameter, dive inside. And here where we're actually trying to apply the close this for now. So we have, these are the masks that we're considering. Let me put this back to auto update now. So this is the mask that we were inputting and this is where the, um, the operation is actually taking place. So we'll, we'll have the option of not using this. Let, let me just place a null here so it's easier for us disconnect this and I'll create the switch where we'll have the option of just keeping the whole um, terrain, the whole inf all, all the information or as an alternative, applying the mask and this is gonna be here. Try to get a bit more space here. See if I can arrange this in a better way. Let me press Shift S. I think this gives us better readability. This type of this style of connections, and 
here we'll do base relative references. Okay, so now the, the option of dealing with the borders will be something that's uh, connected to an exposed parameter here. So right now, as you can see, we should also take care of the outputs. Um, we have two outputs here, so I'll do the same thing uh, here. Make sure we have two outputs. Let's see if not type properties. Here on the beginning, maximum output, let's say two, apply, accept, and here we'll also go to output, create an output. Let's put it here and copy it so that this one is index one. And here we'll say output HF, height field, and output scatter pts these can come out we've done this before so we'll press ctrl x to export them and here we should be able to see everything it's it's going over the the process ctrl v and now you can have a look at the height field or the point now, if we go here to our height field, or either way, it's fine. If we flatten the borders, activate that option, then we should see uh, this happening. Nothing's really happening. Let me copy this parameter again, see what's wrong. Okay, so the problem is that the height field of the road doesn't update automatically. So we would have to kind of refresh, reset the simulation. This is a button that we'll also want to expose in case we're, um, in case we decide to uh, include the erosion. But for now, let's just apply the same process, the same system. So with the switch, I'll bypass the erosion, all these three actually. We'll bypass those three and connect this here. And let's call this switch erosion. Going back, copy parameter, and here, base relative reference. So we'll be able to turn it on and off. Right now it should be off. And since it's off, we're actually seeing the effects of that option. The other thing we'll want to do is, so we've taken care of these two, and finally the scattering part. So let me put this here. If you choose not to scatter trees, we will be able to bypass pretty much all of this process. So here we would just skip this way and we wouldn't need to go over this process. So instead we would kind of just have null. And we could put us could put a switch here. In that case we don't have any mask. We won't be copying anything. Actually, we could probably bypass these two as well. Or these three. Yeah, let me take this off. So I'm going to delete this, put this here. And if we are not interested in scattering trees, then there's a lot of operations that we don't really need to worry about. This is the masking, this is the original, and I'm gonna put an all here to make it easier because we only need to clear the mask if we create the mask. I'll create an all there, push this to the side, and we'll have our switch come directly from the attribute wrangle or consider this introduction and here and now we can get rid of this null 
switch tree layer okay in this case we don't need to worry about the tree layer let's copy this copy parameter and we'll paste it here paste a relative reference and we'll also have this not come out okay i think this nothing will really happen here hyper blur because we won't have any mask information okay it doesn't add a route but the output is going to be empty so we don't need to worry about this now okay so now we have the three options working so we can flatten the borders we can apply the uh, we can scatter trees and that will give us uh, an output here okay we have trees scattered um, if we don't have uh, scattered trees on then this is giving us button borders and here we have okay without the flatten borders the scattered trees is giving us a lot of trees that's not what we want so we need to make sure that on this option there's nothing coming in here let's see so we don't have the mask there nothing is happening so so tag name mask trees maybe here it creates the trees no okay so in that case we'll just um, create another switch here create an all and this will also be connected. Let's exchange the order. And we'll also connect this to copy to this switch. Based around the reference. So it'll be affecting both things. And in case we don't have that on, if we have it on, it's fine. And now it works properly okay with flatten borders on and off the scattered trees uh, whenever the scattered trees is disabled this isn't going to be outputting any trees okay we can have it or not have it 